Good morning. I'm Pastor Don Erickson, pastor here at Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Wildwood, Florida. And this is Wednesday morning, June the 10th. We continue on now with our habit of reading some scripture each morning so that we can start our day off uh, in the right frame of mind to center ourselves on God's word and then to spend a moment in prayer asking God to let his word penetrate our hearts and manifest itself in how we interact with our world. The scripture I want to read to you this morning is uh, about the law. It's about the Ten Commandments. And it comes to us from Matthew in the 15th chapter, verses 17 through 19. And this is in the New Revised Standard Version. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have, not, have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Ten Commandments. It's probably one of the first things that uh, you memorized along with the Lord's Prayer uh, way back during your Sunday school times. And uh, the, the Ten Commandments are, are oftentimes viewed in a, a negative way. They, they are viewed as, as something of a threat, uh, something that uh, causes us to feel um, like we are uh, kind of under the microscope. Well, in, in a way we are. Uh, we don't oftentimes remember that the Ten Commandments is the basis of, of legal systems in, in our country. And as we think about these Ten Commandments that were passed down uh, by God to Moses, uh, what a great thing they are in guiding our society, guiding our daily activities, and uh, producing a, an order that uh, gives us a civil society. Jesus made very clear that the essence of God's law, uh, his commandments and his way of life must be fulfilled. So God's law is it's true and it's, it's righteous and, um, because it flows from his love, from, from his goodness and, and from his holiness. It's a law of grace, it's a law of love, and it's a law of freedom for each of us. And that's why God commands us to love him above all else and to follow the way of his son, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to love by laying down his life for us. Jesus taught God's reverence for a law he uh, also said that on the Lord's Day, reverence or respect for parents, respect for life, for property, for another person's good name, respect for oneself and for one's neighbor, um, lest wrong or hurtful, hurtful desires master and enslave us. So love of God, love of neighbor uh, comes to us in the Ten Commandments. Uh, loving God first and loving one another as ourselves is the greatest of all commandments. So what is uh, impossible for humans to do is certainly possible for God, who gives generously of his gifts and the Holy Spirit to those who, who put their faith in him. So uh, as we go through our daily lives, uh, we can thank God that we have been given boundaries. We have been given uh, borders around what is acceptable behavior. And the Ten Commandments are a great gift that have been given uh, to each and every one of us. Let's spend a moment and thank God for his bounteous gifts to us. 
Gracious God, we are again grateful to you that you give us your words of, of scripture, your words of wisdom, your words of assurance, that uh, we, we can turn to them in times of turmoil, in times of um, great chaos like we're living in right now. So thank you, Almighty God, that we have uh, the immutable truth of your scripture to turn to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to offer you a, a, a prayer of uh, beseeching your mercy, asking that you would bring peace to our tumultuous country and to the world, that the social unrest that is plaguing uh, our country and others as a result of injustice might be supplanted by peace that those of us who have Jesus Christ in our hearts might be the agents of that peace. So Lord, help us to understand what it is to overcome uh, racism and condescension towards other people. Help us to be agents of your healing, your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we continue to ask you to lift from us this COVID-19 virus. Help us, Lord, to make wise decisions about opening up our communities, opening up our churches. Lord, as we get closer to that day, we pray that you would protect us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to ask for your protection, for your provision, for first responders, for medical personnel who continue to battle this disease. Father, we pray that you would continue to fill their hearts with, with joy, that they are able to bring peace and comfort to those who are afflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, again, we thank you that we have these moments in the morning to center ourselves in your word and thank you for loving us unconditionally. And all of God's people said, amen. I hope you have found these words of peace to be comforting to you, that you will, again, spend a little more time in Scripture today other than these few minutes that we spend together. And um, as I have said, we will continue to do these each morning because it's important that we start our day grounded in the Lord, grounded in His Word. So until we meet again tomorrow morning, I bid you God's peace.